So I've got some of these in. BJX gear sets. Oh, it's 16 to 1, 13 to 1. They aesthetic, aesthetically, they look really nice. They have nice packaging. <laughs> Alright guys, just bear in mind that the little cam lobe for the tappet plate on the BJX gears is in a different position to your standard SHS. So here we have the SHS gear and you'll see that the um, where the first pickup tooth is situated here currently um, but if we swap out to the BJX gear you'll notice that it's completely different so if we have a look at this one when it first uh, contacts the tapper plate you'll see that the first pickup tooth for the piston is situated about there so keep that in mind guys there's going to be some uh, timing variances between whatever you're building so you need to keep that um, in consideration when you're doing your building I haven't had enough time to really study these gears and it's late at night I haven't really had a time to kind of really think about what's going to happen what's going to happen with timing etc so keep that in mind when you if you're thinking about buying these gears you may have issues when you're going super high speed or it may end up being better I don't know, I just haven't really thought about it, so just keep that in mind. I also did uh, weigh these uh, and compare them with the weight of your standard SHS gears or the equivalent in SHS gears, so there was about a 10 gram difference in the weight. Um, I took some photos, so I'll put those photos up, you better have a, a little nosy at that. I'm not sure how that really affects the overall performance. Um, kind of I'm basing this on um, cars but like say if you did have a light and flow wheel that does give you the ability to rev a lot quicker to redline but then you lose some torque so something similar must be happening here uh, and I know the, the BJX I think have come out with a new set of gears that are even lighter than these so I think these were 60 gram and the standard SHS gears that I compared them to were 70 grams so there was a 10 gram difference um, yeah so very interesting uh, I was I had some issues last time where I fried the Jeftron MOSFET for whatever reason so just kind of rewired it so that it's just, just kind of like your standard kind of trigger assembly it's no MOSFET it's just very stock works fine I'll do some uh, show you some dry firing testing uh, where I used a M100 spring uh, and an M120 snappy and then full auto okay so there's a didn't sound 100% right doing the test firing with that M120 spring so I pulled it back down uh, discovered the bevel gear is shot so obviously there um, there's some misalignment somewhere in there 
Um, so the bevel gear shot, the pinion gear that was on the motor, pretty much gone as well. It's, the teeth were, were, were bent. Um, what I've kind of been able to diagnose is when the motor's sitting in the grip, it's actually, it's actually um, tilted to the left. So it's actually losing contact with the bevel gear, which is obviously why we're having all that wear. It looks like we're having all that wear. So, I mean, I'll put, I'll put some better pictures up so you can see it's kind of hard to see here. So I guess we could kind of shim the motor in the, in the grip um, by adding some tape or something to try and kind of like hold it more center. But I'm not in favor of doing that. So what I have got is another grip here, which I just got today. Um, and I've already test fitted and it does fit a whole lot better. So instead of dicking around with the tape and trying to shim it, I'm just gonna go with a different grip and hopefully we're gonna get some better results. So what we'll do is we'll get rid of this one, this grip. Uh, we might use that for something else a bit later on. That's, uh, we'll just put it to the side for the moment. So I've already changed the pinion gear on this motor. So this motor came up with an O-type pinion gear. I don't have any O-type pinion gears on hand, so I had to just modify it so that it could take a D-type pinion. So should be back on track now. So have to reshim it, do the beveled pinion shimming, etc., and we should be good to go. Okay, so when we're talking about the alignment of your motor inside the pistol grip basically what you want is this so i've got my motor fitted into the pistol grip you've got those two little locator tabs that are also located on your gearbox right there and then they're either side of the pistol grip so as you can see they line up perfectly with the center of your pinion gear so that is a very good start always check that make sure it's as center as possible and I'm going to show you what happens if you don't align your the bottom of your motor up properly with the motor base plate like like you don't seat it properly you can have problems where it doesn't sit correctly so you might do all your shimming in that perfectly and then you might be a little lazy as you're putting your motor in and you're going to have this happen. So as you can see right there, it is not sitting center. So if I run that across between the two tabs, you'll see, look at that. So it always pays to have a quick look at that before you start assembling.